Hey guys, today's video is going to be my 2019 favourites. I can't believe I'm doing this video already. It feels like yesterday that I was doing my 2018 favourites. I can't believe how quickly last year went. I hope you've all had a great start to the year. It's um, been a busy one so far for me, but we'll talk about that in another video because we've got a lot to talk about this video. I haven't included my skincare favourites in this video because I thought there'll be too many products to share with you and maybe I'll do it separately, but then I also did like two skincare videos very recently so you can check those out I will link them up here if you're interested I watched through my 2018 favorites video which I will link up here and some of the stuff is the same and I can't believe some of the stuff I used to love and I've just pulled them back out again I've started using them again some things changed completely for me last year but I'm gonna stop talking before I can't stop and get into the product. Oh, but before I start, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe, the button is down below and click the notification bell next to it. You become part of this family. Okay, so I'm gonna to start to off with base products. So firstly, as you probably are aware or not aware if you're new to my channel, I'm not that into primers. And the reason being is because I don't think that it does that much for your skin. If you have good skincare, good moisturizers, whatever, that's usually enough to prep your face before makeup. But there are some other products which I love using, which add glow and hydration. That's generally what primers do. Generally, a lot of primers have hyaluronic acid in it, which a lot of moisturizers now have in there. So it's just an unnecessary step. But there are some primers which have like glow to them and if you're into the dewy look like I am, it makes your makeup glow even more. The first thing I'm gonna talk about is one of my absolute favorite primer slash foundation. I don't even know what it is, but it's the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter for a Superstar Youth Glow. That is a mouthful, but this stuff is so good underneath your skin. Underneath your skin? That doesn't sound right. I mean, underneath your foundation. It's a really good thing underneath your foundation because it makes it glow even more. You can even mix it in with your foundation to make it uh, super, super dewy all over your face. But I tend to just put it onto the high points of my cheeks and just where I want that extra glow. I've seen some people use it on top of foundation as like a liquid highlight, which you can do, but I think this is too warm for me to use as a liquid highlighter. I like something a bit more lighter than this and I'm not gonna go and buy another one. I already love this color for me. But yeah, I've been using this all year and I'm not even halfway through so a little really does go a long way there's nothing else like it like I've tried to find dupes I've tried to find something to compare it to it's such a unique product that it's definitely worth trying to give this a go it's going to make your skin look so beautiful and juicy I'm gonna swatch this on my hand for you and you'll be able to see how beautiful it makes my hand glow and it just looks like my skin is so healthy since I got this for Christmas last year I've had so many other people buy this and they all love it as well so if you've not tried this one out give this a go and let me know what you think the other the base product underneath foundation is actually a relatively new product for me and I've been eyeing this product up since it's been released but I don't buy stuff unless I can swatch it and try it so when this brand came to London I went to go and visit the pop-up and I picked this up in an instant and that is the Live Tinted Hue Stick in the shade Rise. This is such a beautiful orangey colour, I'll just swatch this for you right now. It's so different from what I'm used to seeing, especially for orange, because orange can actually be quite a scary color to use, but this is so nice because it's like an orange orange. It's not like a red orange or like a yellow orange. It's like a pure orange. Do you know what I mean? Am I making sense? I use it to color correct under my eyes, around my mouth, and a tiny bit here. I've got a bit of pigmentation. I don't use it that much on my eyes because I haven't really been into orangey tones on my eyes lately, but I love it on my lips. It's such a nice formula and it's very easy to blend. It's very pigmented it's very smooth it's creamy it's a really really lovely product it doesn't feel waxy you know how sometimes those chubby sticks from the drugstore can feel a tiny bit waxy and then it feels like slippery it's nothing like that it feels so nice and smooth on the skin and it looks really good as well i've got a tiny bit under my blush not too much because I've got another thing on top which I will show you later. But yeah, I absolutely adore these hue sticks. I tried them all on that day. I'll link my video up here when I went to the pop-up and it explains further what I think about each one. But yeah, I've really enjoyed using this. So foundations. There's been three foundations which I've used the most this year. And the first one is Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation in the shade 7.5. And it's one of my favorite, favorite foundations ever. It makes you look so glowy and dewy and very natural and skin-like as well. It 
it doesn't look heavy on the skin. You can mix it with oils and creams and like thin out the consistency. It's such a good foundation. The color that I've got, 7.5, is slightly warm. So it kind of color corrects and does all of that for you. So it's like a one step foundation. I don't have some of the products with me to show you because I'm currently staying out in London this week. I've got meetings, I've got stuff going on this week and I wasn't able to bring all my stuff to London with me. So I have some of the stuff which I can show you and the rest I will just maybe put up here or somewhere on the screen or even just down in the description box. The other one is Maybelline Fit Me Foundation in the color 220 and I love that for everyday wear. It's a tiny bit on the neutral side so I do have to color correct with that one but it's such a nice sheer light to medium coverage. You can build it up to full coverage but I generally don't like building up foundations to full coverage because I put so many different layers on that the overall look becomes full coverage if it makes sense but the foundation I tried to keep to a medium and that one is so perfect for everyday use because it gives a really nice natural skin like finish and that's all I ever want from my foundations. Drugstores have really started to push through and come out with different colours and the consistency that I love so I haven't actually needed to stock up on my high-end foundations anymore which is great for my purse. But the other one that I fell in love with last year is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation in the colour 355N. I freaking love this foundation. It's so beautiful. It's kind of similar to the other two so very light consistency but it's buildable so you can get a sheer a medium or a full coverage I can use this as a day-to-day -day foundation I can use it like a very nice evening wear kind of foundation it's so versatile and the color is so spot-on I can't even ask for more this is probably my favorite foundation release from last year what was the other one? Oh, the Fenty one I'll leave my review up there if you want to see what I thought about that let's just see I much prefer this one. The colour is such a warm peachy kind of colour so it kind of colour corrects as well which is nice. Another one step kind of thing. It's like liquidy but not too liquidy and blends really really nicely. I know it looks really orange against my hand right now but my hand is so much lighter than my face. I tend to like to go a tiny bit warmer on the foundation as well because I find that when you add highlighter and all of the other kind of stuff and bronzer it makes your makeup more cohesive rather than if you go too light. If you do have the tiniest bit of pigmentation you probably just get away with wearing this but yeah I've really enjoyed using this. Next, concealers. This is probably one of my favourite favorite products ever to wear because it just lifts my skin and makes me look so much more fresh, alive, awake and you know people stop looking at my dark circles so <laughs> yeah I love concealers. There are four that I use often I feel like I know that's a lot but I love concealers. So the first one is my all-time favorite. This is the MAC Pro Longwear in NC42. If you've been on my channel you know this is one of my top favorites. I promise you I was wearing this concealer as I was born into the world. It's been with me through everything. I love the color, I love the consistency, I love the finish, I love the coverage, I love everything about this. Like every time I try a new concealer I always compare it to this one. This is just my OG and then next I got not last year, I think I got it the year before, but it's become one of my favorites. This is the 24 hour Studio Fix Smooth Wear Concealer from MAC as well. And this NC42 is slightly different to the Pro Long Wear. I'll just show you. I don't know if it's picking up, but this is the NC42 from the 24 hour Smooth Wear. And this is the NC42 from the Pro Long Wear. I don't know if you can see, but this one from the 24 hour wear is a tiny bit more yellow based. And this one is a tiny bit more peachy undertone. So it really depends on how how much my dark circles are showing up. If they're not showing up so bad, I'll go in with this one. If I feel like I need a tiny bit more color correction, then I'll go in with the Pro Longwear Concealer. But these two are so good for Indian skin tones. It's got the right amount of warm to color correct, and it's got the right amount of yellow to brighten. They're just so good. Another one that I love using recently, and I don't have it today because I've finished it already, is the ColourPop No Filter Foundation, and that is just as good as this one. It's got the right amount of peach in there, it's got the right amount of yellow in there, and it's also, it's only like six dollars whereas this is like three times the price of that so obviously I'm gonna love the Colourpop one even more I already have my backup of it but yeah if you haven't tried that one it's definitely worth giving it a go and lastly this is another one of my favorite ones that I've used last year it's the Born This Way Multi Sculpting Concealer in the shade warm beige so I got warm sand and warm beige and when I go away I don't like to wear too much foundation actually I don't like to wear any foundation on my trip to Japan last year I just took these two foundations this one and the warm sand and I kind of made it full coverage from that these products work 
so well as a foundation, as a concealer. You can use it for anything really, but it is high, high, high coverage. And I find that it works really nicely for me when I put it on the back of my hand and warm it up a tiny bit and then put it onto my skin and then use a beauty blender to blend it out just so that I get a really nice thin layer. And if I need to go on top with another thin layer, I can do that rather than one thick layer, which is gonna look cakey and crease and it's not gonna look good. So that's how I like to use this. I just checked my concealers from last year and they haven't changed. Well, I love the Pro Long Wear, the ColourPop and the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. That goes to show that I'm in a dedicated long-term relationship with these concealers. So next, powders. My favourite powders this year, last year, I keep saying this year but I mean last year. The first one is the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. This is so, so good for people with dry skin, especially under the eyes. I pop my beauty blender in here and then I put it onto my eyes and it just smooths it out so nicely and it doesn't look dry or cakey. It looks so beautiful. I have it on today right under my eyes. I haven't powdered my entire face actually, just under my eyes and in the areas where I get a tiny bit oily. This one is made for dry skin, it's just so beautiful. It is expensive but it's definitely worth it. Another powder I love is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in the shade 2 medium. I know it looks really light and yellow in the pan but it's actually really nice. I pop it under my eyes, I pop it around my nose and it's a really nice one to touch up with at the end of the day if you're looking to just they blot a little. I love the way this adds brightness to your skin and it's a powder that you can kind of layer over product. You're supposed to layer powder over products but sometimes with powders if you put your makeup in the morning and you set it, you go on with your day and then you come in the evening and you're a tiny bit moist and you want to just knock it back a bit. This powder is one of those ones which help you knock back the shine and it doesn't cause your makeup to separate or get cakey and clumpy. It's just such a good powder. I also use this with a damp beauty blender. You see where the little dip is? That's where I get and I'll just pop it under my eyes and good to go. It makes your skin look so smooth and flawless. My nose is my problem area so I know instantly if a product's gonna be good or bad just by the way it sits on my nose. Next is probably my favorite part of makeup application and that is bronzers. I've got two cream based bronzers and I've got two powder bronzers which I keep going for this year, last year caught myself that time. The first one is, yes you guessed it, the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel bronzer. This is mm, so good. It gives my skin that really nice, natural, sun-kissed glow that not a lot of bronzers can achieve. It's just dark enough, but light enough so that it gives a nice kind of, what am I looking for? What's the word? Dimension is the word that I'm looking for. It gives a really nice dimension to my face without making it look like I've tried. So if you look here, actually that's not the best place to look, but I like it when you can't really tell where my bronzer and highlight and everything go. When I do my makeup, I like it to look seamless and I don't like it to be any lines or anything too, too obvious. This is so good because it gives a natural kind of glow to your face. Kind of like you've just been on holiday and you're just sunkissed. I've been using this non-stop for about two years. Okay, not non-stop, not every day, but when I want to look a tiny bit like extra, but still pull it back a tiny bit, this is what I go for because it just gives that extra oomph without looking too much. Another cream bronzer, which has been sent from the gods, is this one from Hourglass. It is the Loom Sheer Color Trio, and the palette's called Sunset. It's these three shades. You've got a highlight, a blush, and a contour, and I take this everywhere with me when I go traveling, because this shade here is such a good brown shade to bronze and contour with, so you kind of get two for one almost. This is such a beautiful, natural blush shade for my skin tone, and then this highlight is so nice. It just gives that extra glow, and I find that when I use this, my skin looks like I'm an angel. It looks so beautiful with this product, on I can't even describe it I get so many compliments when I wear this even the Chanel one I get so many compliments that my skin looks so good and healthy it looks like I've been drinking a lot of water I do drink a lot of water and it does help with the skin but this stuff really helps me look even more dewy and then I have two favorite powder bronzers one is not gonna be a surprise to you because I use it often and that is the Benefit Hula bronzer I just freaking love the color of this one. It's such a good brown tone. It's got that kind of warmth to it, but it's not too warm where it looks orangey. It's got a nice amount of neutral tones in there as well where I can use it as a contour. It's just such a good shade. I love the fact that it's kind of a tiny bit powdery, so it's very, very easy to use. It's such a good bronzer. I did a video on my favorite bronzers. I don't know if I finished editing that one. 
but when I do I'll link it up here or in the description box below so you can check that out too. The other favourite bronzer that I've been using so often this year is the Butter Bronzer in the shade Deep Bronzer and this like the Hoola is such a nice shade because it's warm enough but neutral enough as well that I can use it every day. Oh my god it smells so good. It's got a tiny bit of a sheen to it. It's such a smooth powder. Imagine a creamy powder that is this and it's just so nice for everyday wear. I put it on today as my bronzer. It's just such a pretty shade. It doesn't look too much but it just gives you that something extra you know to make you look like you have great skin. Next highlight. So I haven't really been into highlighting this year. I know. I just feel like I like my skin to look dewy but I use other products to make it look dewy so I don't need to add that extra shine to it and I hate the way people go too overboard with their highlighters that it looks like a strip of highlight on their face. I hate it. I like it just like this. You know when you turn your head and it just catches the light a tiny bit and it makes your skin look really good instead of just looking like a strip. This year I have been using one powder highlight the whole year. Well not the whole year but I've been picking this powder highlight up so much because it's not a typical powder highlight. It's the ABH and Amrezy highlight and it's just such a beautiful golden colour and there's no fallout. It's kind of like a creamy powder, almost like the butter bronzer but look at that. It's such a beautiful shade. Can you see when I turn it away from the light it doesn't look like anything and then I've turned it back to the light and it looks like pow! Yeah that's exactly what I want to achieve from my highlight but I don't like it too much so I like it very blended out like this. So can you see like it now gives my hand a really nice skin like hydrated healthy look. That's what we're trying to achieve. The other one I don't have it on me today because I didn't really need to highlight myself like that but it's the Marc Jacobs, Marc Jacobs Dew Drop in the shade Fantasy I believe. If I'm wrong I will write it up here but it's such a nice like almost rose goldy warm kind of highlight. It's not like your typical yellowy gold, not like this. It's not like this kind of color. It's got more like a rosy warm undertone, which makes my skin look so beautiful when it's on. It's not highlighted like this. It just looks like my skin is naturally glowing and it's beautiful. But yeah, it's probably one of my favorite liquid highlights I've ever used. And the consistency is quite thick, but not too thick that it's like gross but it's thick enough that it stays where you put it. So I put a tiny bit on the back of my hand and then I blend it out like this onto blush. So this is probably one of my favorite things to wear because it just adds so much color to your face and it transforms the look from like looking gaunt to looking really fresh and young and alive. And one of my favorite, favorite blushes from last year, hands down, was the MAC Gingerly Blush. It's just such a beautiful shade. You can wear it daytime, evening, anywhere. But it's just such a beautiful colour. It's like natural but glam at the same time. Does that make sense? It's got peach undertones, coral undertones, pink undertones. It's the perfect neutral blush shade for brown girls like me. Like, I can't even begin to say enough good stuff about this because there's just so much to say and nothing to say at the same time because the product says it all. It is a matte blush, so there's nothing dewy about it and it's not going to shine in the wrong places, so it's very, very pretty. The other one that I've been using as a blush is the Live Tinted in Rise. I think it's such a nice formula because it's creamy. It doesn't make you look oily, but it gives you such a nice color to your face. When I'm in a rise, and when I'm just going to pop out the house and I need a tiny bit of colour to my face I'll just pop it onto the cheek, a tiny bit onto the lips and I'm good to go. This is such a good product for multi-use. Next, eyeshadow palettes. I've got quite a few eyeshadow palettes but I feel like I go to the same ones every time and I'm using the same colours all the time. It's the same kind of brown shade and the same reddy kind of burgundy shades that I tend to gravitate towards. The first palette is pretty obvious. I use it nearly all the time and it's the Soft Glam by Anastasia Beverly Hills. I freaking love the shade Rustic, Cypress Umber, Mulberry. They're basically my three go-to shades for every day. I just feel like they're so beautiful. I've got them on my eyes today. I've got Rustic all over my eyelid and then I've got a blend of Cypress Umber and Mulberry along the lash line. It's such a good formula, such a good palette, highly recommend it. It's a tiny bit powdery so just be careful when you go into it but it's just one of those which you can wear for every day and evening and weddings and everywhere you can get something out of this look and it will go with your outfits. Another palette which I freaking love, this one has a tiny bit more colour in it, it's the Colour Drain Queen of Hearts palette. I freaking love this palette, it's so beautiful. These shades your majesty and dethrone are just look at that i wear dethrone everywhere like 
every event that I go to that I don't know what I want to do with my eyes, I'm wearing D Throne on my eyes. It's got those brown, pinky and goldy undertones to it and it's just perfect. The formula of the matte here is so good as well. I love Royal Prerogative and Duchess. They are beautiful shades. They're just such nice tones to use on our skin and I constantly dip into this palette. It's so nice. I love the pops of colours as well. They're so pretty. I get more use out of the neutrals than I do of the colours here just because that's been my vibe of last year but I do really love the colours in this palette. Another palette which I've loved using this year is the Patrick Star and Matte collaboration. This is the Gold Getter Quad. I find that these colours, these three are mattes and this is the shimmer. They just go so well on my eyes. I love these for everyday use. If I want to add a tiny bit of shimmer to my look I'll go in with this but generally I tend to use these three shades all the time. They are soft brown, Swiss chocolate and I am into it. They've just been something that I go towards every time I do my eyeshadows. I never really thought I'd be into burgundies but since I've been using this I love the way that it gives a warmth to your eye but it doesn't look too brown or too black it just gives you something different. I think you can pick these up separately anyway from MAC so it's not like a palette that you've missed out on if you haven't bought it. I've got some single eyeshadow toppers as well which I love the first one being the Stila Shimmer and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow in the shade Twig. This is beautiful it's such a nice brown I use it practically all the time it's a kind of similar shade to dethrone so I love to use this and if I need a tiny bit more on top then I'll go in with dethrone look how beautiful that is it's such a lovely colour to use as a smoky brown eye and I just generally pop this all over the lid and then just buff it out with a brush and it's like a one eyeshadow eye look for the days that you're rushing but you still want to look glam. Another one like that is the one from Hourglass, the Scattered Light Glitter Eyeshadows and this one is the colour Smoke. I just love the cool tone of this. It gives a beautiful kind of glitter and shine to your eye without it being too much colour. Can you see? It's such a pretty topper to add to your eye look to give it that extra kind of shine without looking too much. I love the these kind of things which are so simple and easy to use and just have such a nice effect and the last one actually surprisingly I haven't used this on camera I don't know why I haven't used it on camera I just tend to use it day to day or if I need to you know jazz up my lid a tiny bit it is the Glossier Lid Star in the shade Herb and it's a really beautiful green color and it's so sheer as well that you can just pop it on the top of a brown eyeshadow and it gives it a tiny bit of a green glisten it's just so stunning on the eyelid especially with brown eyes it looks so pretty. I haven't tried the other colours because I'm not that drawn to it but this one stood out to me so much and I'm so glad I got this. Next eyeliners. It wouldn't be a 2019 favourites for brown people if I didn't have eyeliners. So I've got two here and one other one that I love using. This black is from Urban Decay. It's Perversion and it's probably the blackest black that I've ever used. It's such a smoky and deep black shade and what I love about it is that it stays where you put it so what you can do is line your eyes and put this on and then blend it out with a pencil brush and it just gives you a really nice smoky eye and it won't transfer at all and the second one is Teddy from MAC and this is such a beautiful brown shade this kind of reminds me of the Stila twig because it's got that kind of glitter in there and I love using this on the days that I want to wear eyeliner but I don't want to wear black because it's too harsh this gives me enough depth without making it look too black and also because of the shimmers it makes my eyes look a little bit glistening so I love that about this. I use it everywhere on my waterline, on the top of my eye just to give myself a tiny bit of a wing and then the other one is the Stila pencil. It's also like this one from Urban Decay. It's very very black, really good and also very nice to use as a smoky eye. Okay so next is mascara. So I generally used to use the Rimmel Exaggerate one for years. I used to use it every day, sometimes for evening events but I think they discontinued that formula and they've made a new one and I don't love that one at all. So I found another one. It's the Monsieur Big from Lancome. It's a bit more expensive but it's the mascara I'm wearing on my eyelashes today and I just feel like it gives me enough lift without me having to use falsies. Sometimes it's so nice going out and not having to use false eyelashes and this is something that I can substitute that with. Don't get me wrong, I love using false eyelashes but you know sometimes you just want to go with your own eyelashes and there's nothing there. Well Monster Good is a really good mascara to bring them out. It lengthens them, it thickens them, it makes them black. It's everything that you want in a mascara. We're on the last category. Now if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, you need to subscribe. The button's down below and uh, I don't know what you're waiting for. But anyway, lips. I bought this lip liner at the end of 2018, I believe, and I have been using it non-stop for the whole year. And if you followed me on Instagram, you know exactly which one it is. It is MAC Spice Lip Liner. It is stunning. 
on a brown skin. Got a really nice amount of warmth in there. This is something that I love to use when I want a nude lip because sometimes when you wear nude lips, it kind of washes you out. But this has enough warmth in there that's going to give you that structure so it doesn't look too washed out. I'm actually wearing it on my lips today. I've been using this almost every day this year. I use this every time I want to wear a nude lip and I get so many questions about what lip color I'm wearing and it's because of this. Like it doesn't matter what nude color I wear. If I wear this as a lip liner, it's going to transform that nude lip into something magical. Along with that, now I don't really like talking about these online because they were limited edition. I've been using these Dose of Colors Desi and KT collaboration. This one is my main. This one is Hey Girl. And I just feel like these are my perfect nude. They're just the right kind of tone, the right kind of consistency. I love Dose of Colors lip products and the colors are just so spot on. So this one here is my main. This one here is Hey Girl and it just looks looks so pretty on brown skin. I'm gonna try and find some dupes for these because they're just perfect. I've got them on my lips today. I would definitely try my hardest to find dupes for these because I love them. Another lipstick that I bought recently, which I love so much, is the Lisa Eldridge lipstick in the color Velvet Fawn. And it's just such a pretty nude. It's like a everyday kind of nude. It's like not too light, not too dark. It's got enough brown, it's got enough peach in there. And it's just such a pretty color. It's a really similar color to my main. So this is Lisa Eldridge, this is my main. The finishes are so different that it makes it look a tiny bit different. The Lisa Eldridge one definitely looks a tiny bit more pinker and my main looks a tiny bit more warmer. That's the only difference, but with Spice Lip Liner, they tend to look quite similar anyway. And then the other one is more of a pink based one. This is Half and Half from MAC. It's an amplified lipstick, one of my favorite MAC formulas. And this is more of a pink, cooler toned kind of lipstick, which isn't really nice natural kind of lip color to wear because our lips are naturally pink. Yeah, this is a really nice color and formula. I think this is one of my favorites from last year as well if I remember correctly but I love this color when I'm wearing like cooler tone outfits. I wore this on my sister's wedding last year along with Saw lip liner which was one of my favorite lip liners from 2018 but I haven't been using that a lot last year. I've been using Spice like a ho and I'm not even ashamed of it. Lastly this lip product is one that I loved in 2018 as well and it's a holy grail for me actually. It's one that I've been wearing all of 2019. Every time I wanted a gloss I would go in with the Fenty Gloss Bomb in the shade Fenty Glow. This is still my favorite gloss of all time. I love the way that it looks. I love the way that it feels. I love the consistency. I just love everything about it. You can see that it's kind of gross. I just leave it in my bag all the time so I can use it all the time. Because my lips are so dry it just gives my lips a really nice juicy look. I know they've come up with so many other colors but I just love this one. I've tried the other ones often and they are really really nice but there's just something that draws me back to this one. I think it's because it's just such a nice natural color and I don't really need to wear anything with it. So that's it guys. That's my 2019 favorites. I hope you enjoyed watching this. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe and click the notification bell so that you'll be notified of any new videos that I upload. Let me know what kind of things you want to see more of this year and I will add those to the list because Obviously, I want to make content that you're going to enjoy watching. So let me know down below. Let me know what your favorites were for last year. I'd love to know what products you loved using. I thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.